Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Achua and in this video, I have 10 fragrance updates. This is part of my Life After Maceration series where I talk about how fragrances over time have developed. Maceration doesn't always equate getting better. Sometimes they get worse. No, in most instances, fragrances get better after maceration. But occasionally you have one or two fragrances getting worse, you know. And case in point is going to be a fragrance like Anna and Glory by Latifa. For me, this is a personal experience. I used to like Anna and Glory so much better, you know, before I allowed it to sit for over a period of six months, you know. After about the six, seven months, you know, period in my collection it began getting like i didn't really like it as much you know because it became a lot more spicy and it was a spice i never really got used to you know so i had to let it go i have since decluttered anna and glory for my collection you know and i'm coming up with a declutter video very soon but in this video i have 10 fragrance updates and i'm going to start with a fragrance i have already featured in one of my life after maturation series and this is going to be um mango punch I felt the need to talk about this fragrance in a life after maceration series because this fragrance has not remained the same even after the you know first life after maturation series you know it has not remained the same this was a fragrance that a lot of people complained that they had issues with you know and I, I get it where they are coming from the initial first few days first few weeks is not really the best it can be a little synthetic smelling the mango comes across as a bit synthetic the max is also a bit synthetic and it used to have this green you know green mango nuance which was like a bit off-putting i've seen a lot of people declutter this fragrance and i remember when i was doing my first update i mentioned the fact that it has improved after about six months of this fragrance in my collection i can confidently say it is one of the best mango scents i you know i currently have you know i think i have about three mango scents or four you know currently but i think this one has really it's almost like the number one at this point because the mango in this one has become so much sweeter you know it, it used to be very syrupy but i'm getting less and less of that syrupy nuance it is much more of a very ripe mango you know it used to be like a green mango you know nuance but now it is more of a very ripe rich intense mango scent very realistic it's like you know very juicy mouth watering after about three months i loved it but now it's been about six months you know and this fragrance has changed so much for the better you know so so much i i get less of that green nuance the green mango i used to get has now become much more of a ripe mango it's like a very realistic mango that you buy from the market you put it down it is green and then it's just you know becomes ripe and then um sweet intense it is so realistic now it has become so juicy it feels very realistic very tropical very juicy i felt the need to update this for the second time because it has really changed it has become much more intense that synthetic nuance it had is totally gone now and this process took about six months i think it's almost about six months in my collection you know so you need to be patient with this you know sometimes you need to give fragrances chances you know unless you're in a hurry to utilize them but this one is a good ex example of not sleeping on anything you know but wait on it after at least some few months you know if you have the time for it so that is going to be mango punch mango punch from paris corner the next one i have here is going to be a fragrance i feel or i would describe as very underrated it's not it, it, it's it's it, it's received some lukewarm you know um reviews here on youtube and other platforms a lot of people loved it you know because it's like quite fun and playful others did not like it when i initially um talk about this fragrance i wasn't too sure how i thought about it you know it was once um reported to be in the likeness of the Choco Max, you know, and Nebras. But this fragrance, you need to give it time and you need to give this fragrance chances. It is one of the best soothing, comforting, like chocolatey, lactonic, cacaoish, you know, sort of fragrances I have ever come across. It is the best, honestly, for the price point, it is one of the best. It doesn't give me anything synthetic. 
now that it has been able to develop i get a very smooth like very something very smooth slightly lactonic it still maintains that lime citrusy you know nuance it has at the top but there's something about it which gives me a very comforting sort of cashmere feel you know like comforting sweater weather sort of feel very soothing the scent by itself is so beautiful i think it has some chocolatey you know nuances but it doesn't give you that you know cocoa puff you know like cocoa powder chocolate nuance like choco max for example this one is like cocoa but like very lactonic in a way and also something like a coconut caramelized something you know it is very beautiful and uh, as a matter of fact you know i think this is quite under underrated what this one smells to me currently is that it smells so much like sabrina cupping test sweet tooth this has developed and smells almost identical, but I can confidently say I prefer this even over this one. Honestly, this is one of the best, you know, celebrity fragrances I have ever come across for the price point and the, 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 the no structure or the, the scent profile. But this, this one, it smells so much alike. The only difference I find between these two is the fact that this one has that citrusy sort of, you know, top, whilst this one does not. But they smell so identical. And this one it feels like so much richer, so much like well-rounded. There's something about this fragrance, you know, that I think everybody should at least give it a try. The first few days, first few weeks is quite lukewarm, you know. You might sort of write it off, you know, but give it some time. I think I've had this for about three months at this time in my collection, you know. I think about three months in. I think a lot of people are sleeping on this. Give it a time, like, like, give it a try. It is very affordable. It was even affordable at the time it came out, you know. Now, I'm not sure how it's being priced. But it's so realistic of that comforting, soothing, you know, like, something. It's very comforting. Like, that is the best way I can describe this, you know, this this fragrance. With a hint of that lactonic, cacao-ish, you know, but not like cheap smelling cocoa scent, you know. It used to smell a bit... A bit synthetic and a bit a bit of a, a cheap smelling you know thing at the beginning but now all those things have you know far like they've left this fragrance it's now like richer much more intense much more thicker i love this the projection has improved the performance has improved i wear this one and it lasts me at least you know seven eight hours you know at least seven to eight hours that is the the lasting power or the performance now it doesn't fill up a room but that people you know arms length around you in a room are going to smell this fragrance on you so for me kisa delicious is one of the most underrated you know lactonic cacao-ish um citrusy fragrances i have ever come across you know so please do not sleep on this one it is indeed a good one especially if you like the likes of sabrina carpenter's sweet tooth you know phenomenal phenomenal the next yeah, it's going to be a fragrance I have never spoken about. I got this fragrance like almost four months ago and ask me why I have never even reviewed this fragrance, you know, for whatever reason, I, I can't even tell. I've had it for over four months when it was, you know, I think Paulina Shah spoke about it and I immediately picked this fragrance and I guess featured it in the hall and have since never spoken about it. But today is the day for this fragrance, you know. I think one of the reasons why I never really gave it much of an attention is the fact that this fragrance has been compared to um, Delina La Rose. But when I initially sp sprayed this fragrance, it didn't really give me La Rose vibes. It is quite different. After four months, I still don't, I will not say it is an accurate one to one inspiration of Delina La Rose. I think it takes a different direction, you know um la rose is a very watery peony rose scent with that freshness this is also fresh but i find it so much fruity there is a fruitiness about this that i find missing in the original la rose they smell quite identical but very different directions you know this one is like more of the fruit you know i get more fruits less of that watery tart aquatic feel of the og la rose la rose is more of a something very watery something a little more tart a little somehow even a little bit of a sparkling vibe to it but in this hour pink you know this is hour pink by um zimaya 
I find none of those things. It is not watery. It is not tart. It is not, you know, um, it is fruity. It's more of a fruity scent to me, you know, although it is in the region of the deliness, it is like delina, but with more fruit, you know, if it makes any sense. And I can't even pinpoint the exact fruit I'm smelling here, you know, although it has a lot of lychee, I think there is something else. There's this fruity nuance I get, you know, that I don't get in the La Rose. What this one smells to me is more of the OG Delina. Honestly, to my nose, it smells more like the OG Delina, but with more fruit, you know. That is what it tastes to me because I don't get a lot of tartness. It is not as watery. It is not aquatic. It is it is a bit fresh, you know, but it is more of a fruity, peony rose scent, you know, lychee. Yes, fruit as in lychee, but there's something else. There is definitely some other fruit I am smelling that, you know, aside the lychee that I can't really, you know, um, pinpoint, you know, but it is not as watery, aquatic, light, airy, sort of, you know, feel that the OG La Rose gives. This one is more fruity and more intense, more rich, you know, like more rich and dense as compared to, you know, the OG La Rose. Nonetheless, a very beautiful, feminine, you know, very feminine fragrance, I would say, you know, highly recommend, you know, highly recommend. If you think um, Delina was a bit too of that, you know, um, tart for you, I think this one is less tart you know this one is less tart so probably this one would be a, a preferable alternative but i don't think it is really like the 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 aquatic watery light very you know light elegant sort of you know la rose nuance i was looking for so for that reason i would say this is about 75 80 percent you know inspiration of La Rose, but not exactly the same thing. So that is going to be like my, my review and then update of this fragrance. Probably if there's anything that develops after this um, video, I'll let you know. But for now, that is what I, I can say about Hawa Pink by Isimaya. I'll move on to one of my favorite fragrances of all time. And this actually needed no form of maceration. I initially got a decant of this. I just blew through it because I love it so much. Victor, there is nothing that needed to change about this, and apparently there are two formulations of this of this fragrance, and I have the older formulation which which has a note of oud, and for me, I don't know how the other one smells, you know, but this one is cane, you know, I'm I'm eager to try the one without the oud, that is more of that lime caramel vanilla, I'm eager to try that, but for this one, honestly. When it comes to my scent, taste, my preference, and the ones that, you know, speak to me, Empire Victor, the older formulation, really speaks to me. It is like that oud, that, you know, vanilla, um, like delicious, creamy. It gives me something like a banana vibes, you know. It gives me something banana-esque, you know. There's something about this, that smells slightly banana-esque to me, you know, aside the, the, the oud and then that funky oud and the, um, I think it has some caramel and, um, vanilla, you know, very creamy vanilla here, but that sort of banana-esque, you know, if you have the old formulation, let me know if you also get it, you know, because my daughter once said that and I've never, you know, looked back. It's, it, I, as soon as I smell it, I get that, you know, banana X feel from it, you know. This one didn't need any form of maturation. For me, the first day I smelled it, it was like amazing. After, it's, I think I, I've had this for about a month and a half now. It is fantastic. There is nothing I would love to change about this, you know. There's absolutely nothing I would like to add or take from this fragrance. It is perfect, you know. It, it, it smells almost the same. I think the only thing that has changed the fact that Usually, you know, they, they get much more better with the performance, you know. And even this didn't, didn't have any performance challenge from the beginning. So I don't think a lot of has changed. What really it is is that it, it was beautiful from the beginning and it's still a very beautiful one, you know. So that is going to be Empire Victor. The next two, I'm going to make it a two because they smell identical, you know. And I got Caramel Cascade before I picked up Eclair because it was launched first and then came Eclair. And what I would say about these two is that for me personally, I never got anything like the mushroom, that root beer. You know, a lot of people 
say they got mushroom root beer something synthetic honestly i never got it with caramel cascade to me it, it, it was a milky sort of you know like a milky variation of bianco latte much more milky much more sort of you know less caramelly um variation of bianco latte that was what it was to me i never got anything root beer i never got that mushroom all I can say is that over time, it just got a little bit, you know, um, smoother. There was something about it. Honestly, there was something about it which didn't feel well-rounded. And it was also very light, you know, like quite light. But over time, it, it gets more, you know, um, it, it gets much more closer to the OG Bianco Latte in the sense that it becomes much more richer. But I didn't find anything synthetic about it. It didn't come across as something, you know, that needed lots and lots of time. I remember the first few days I got the fragrance, I was enjoying it thoroughly. There was nothing of putting about it, in my opinion. So that is what it is. Over the time, like over the last couple of months, I think it has just improved in terms of it being um a little more denser now, you know, and, you know, just simply put like a little more intense as compared to the previous you know weeks i got this uh, fragrance and when it comes to eclair this i will take back my first reaction where i i you know it came across as being a little negative towards this i think i've been speaking about this fragrance this fragrance is actually a very good one more of that caramel more of that you know um bianco latte is like much more closer in my opinion whereas this one is like more caramel caramel um forward and this one is more of the milk you know forward nonetheless like very beautiful interpretation of bianco latte this one is much more intense you know it was intense it had a very intense alcohol opening from the beginning which like was a very big thrill for me it smells like alcohol but over time it, it has really you know that alcohol opinion has gone you know i don't smell that anymore anytime i spray this one i guess it just goes straight to that bianco latte milky caramel lactonic you know vanilla nuance that is what it gives me whereas this one gives me more of a milky nuance you know so i'll say they have both you know developed like they have both transformed but not like too much from the original spray you know like on the first spray this one didn't give me anything synthetic this one was very alcohol intense at the opening now i don't get it anymore it is like a good interpretation of bianco latte this is equally a good one but more milky you know and a little more lighter less of that caramel where this one is much more of the caramel much more intense vanilla you know that is what it gives me so i would say they are good to you know to go from the get-go but you need to give this a little just maybe a day or two for that alcohol thing to, to to go away but this one i never got any mushroom i never got any root beer i never did i never really did and one other fragrance i also want to talk about for the second time as part of a life after maturation series is going to be Cleopatra. This I remember when I was in Zimbabwe with um, Sea Chronicles, I featured it in the one that we did together. And I wanted to give an update because when I returned um, from that trip, I went back to sort of, you know, check on the OG um, Creed Kamina, you know, just to check it again or test it again and compare. And I can confidently say, they smell like a one-to-one. -one. They smell so much alike now. Like, you can hardly detect any difference between these two fragrances, you know. This one used to be more floral. It, it, it used to be more of that peony, violet, rose with very less of the fruits. But now, when I compare it to the OG Caramel Creed Camina, they smell so identical. You can hardly differentiate between these two fragrances. That, you know, um, overly floral nuance i used to get i no longer get that you know it's it's like at par it is really at par like 99 percent identical to um creed camina in terms of the performance in terms of the sense profile that um floral nuance has dialed back although it is a predominant floral fruity fragrance you know but um it used to be a lot more floral as compared to Creed Camina. Now it's like very identical. So just to give you another heads up, just an update of how this one smells you know, currently. And the last fragrance, not the last fragrance, but the last but one is going to be Bayan Al Asra from Paris Corner. After um, Amwaj 
guidance you know the og homage guidance and i've always maintained that this is like the edt you know version of guidance whereas guidance is more intense more spicy you know much more dense this one is like a more watery aquatic sort of you know version of guidance it hasn't really changed that much you know from the beginning till now i never got anything wrong with this fragrance it, it, it really didn't have to go through any process of maceration i got a sense you know profile it, it, to give you guidance but like a less intense edt sort of version of guidance over the last couple of i think two months now it has not really changed that much you know maybe probably performance wise you know but scent wise no it hasn't really changed scent wise you a lot of fragrances become much more intense and dense after maturation and of course it has you know but scent wise it has not you know it's still a very beautiful less intense watery or dialed back version of guidance you know a very beautiful one if you don't have patience for fragrances to sit and develop Buy an ass rice, one of those fragrances, you can guess, you know, get on the go and then you'll be good to go, you know. So this is um my update on buy an ass rice. And the last one I have here is going to be um from Fragrance World. And this is Yuzu, Yuzu from Fragrance World, you know. It has the note of Yuzu, some lime, lemon. And this one used to give me, it, it used to be more masculine leaning to me, you know. It's like a summer sort of scent yuzu lime lemon juniper berry you know that sort of masculine vibes and it used to give me a lot more of a masculine vibes nowadays i can confidently say it's more it's smoothing out you know it's smoothing out to the extent that it's more unisex than masculine you know for me i consider a lot of these fragrances unisex you know but for people if i'm selling to someone I, I need to be honest it used to be so much masculine but for me i consider it very unisex i can say it's gotten so much unisex much more well-rounded the yuzu is not as you know tart and sharp like that it used to be even the lime citrusy nuance was a bit you know a bit punchy but it feels like it's rounded you know up beautifully it, it doesn't come across as very sharp you know and that's sh that sharp that meets you in the you know nose anymore it's more well blended now it is much more unisex it feels much more toned down it feels much more like usable i think it was usable from the day one but it's one of those fragrances you need to give it like a week you know just like a week or some few days to sit down and fizzle out you know and this user fragrance is really growing on me you know i've utilized this fragrance for quite some time it used to be a fragrance like you know i i just wanted to thoroughly understand this fragrance you know, and i enjoy it too i really enjoy this fragrance so it's like it's i would consider it a summer staple you know something with a bit of a cake it gives me juniper berries but i don't think there's any juniper berries here you know and it also gives me something like m Mikalev's gin tonic you know i think um, i compared it to gin tonic it's like identical it gives me gin tonic vibes you know and it's like light watery refreshing with some green herbal sort of you know feel to it you know so that is going to be used from fragrance world highly recommended i think if i do my summer you know collection or um, summer recommendation this is definitely going to be part of the list you know so i think that is all i have for you when it comes to um my um life of some maceration for this video and i hope this video found you well please do not forget to give this video a thumbs up and i hope to see you in my next one take care Bye-bye.